If you change the notes of Beethoven, you'd probably get a strange reaction. But you don't have to change a music score to change how it's expressed. And it's the same in our genes. You don't have to change the DNA itself to change how genes are expressed. Almost every cell in your body has the same DNA sequence. But of course, not all cells are the same. That's because different cells use the code in different ways. Stuff happens to the genes during development and through life. They're turned on and off depending on their jobs. A cell's combined set of all these changes is called its epigenome. The term epigenome describes changes that affect gene expression that aren't changes to the DNA itself, the sheet music. Epigenomic changes ensure that a heart cell is different to a brain cell, even though the code is the same. New work is helping to provide a reference of the epigenomic landscape in lots of different human cells. A fleet of scientists is trying to examine all these features as a way of understanding what cells do with their genetic code and just how flexible it is and what goes wrong in disease. Epigenomic changes are chemical tweaks to DNA and to the proteins that package our DNA. They don't necessarily affect genes themselves. They affect particular regions of the code whose job it is to turn genes on or off. One much talked about change is methylation. This is when a chemical gets added to the DNA and it primes a gene to be turned off. Another type of change has more to do with the arrangement of DNA. DNA isn't just in a big, long, endless line inside your cells. It's wrapped around proteins called histones. The configuration of these histone packages and how close together they sit can affect which genes are read and how many. Many changes to histone proteins or to DNA methylation are normal events in cell growth and development. When cells age, so there are still more changes to the epigenome. Some researchers have spotted an increase in methylation in older brains, for example. The environment, too, can affect the epigenome. Factors like what you eat, or if you smoke, or how much you exercise, can also influence the cell through epigenomic changes. Some diseases are linked with epigenomic changes, too. Take cancer, for example, where cells replicate out of control. Here, scientists see rogue epigenomic changes. These changes are linked to genes behaving weirdly, genes being expressed that shouldn't be expressed, or genes shut off that usually keep cells in check. There are changes to the epigenome in other disorders too. Take Alzheimer's. One new study shows that even early in the condition, there can be changes to methylation in brain cells. It's still an open question whether these changes can trigger the disease. But if they do, that means that drugs that target the epigenome could one day slow the progression of Alzheimer's or even help prevent it. Finally, cells can inherit not just the DNA, the sheet music, but the epigenomic changes too. They pass these on to the next generation of cells. Just like a Beethoven symphony, a cell's epigenome is complex and exquisitely arranged. Scientists are starting to understand how that arrangement changes in different cell types, during development and in disease. And it's a performance that's just beginning. Produced with exclusive support from Illumina.